We know that the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere has been rising since the start of the Industrial Revolution and that the increasing levels of CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere have been causing the planet to warm. We also know that somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of the excess CO2 emitted into the atmosphere owing to the burning of fossil fuels and other industrial activity has been absorbed by the oceans. This is not surprising since the oceans comprise roughly 70 percent of the Earth's surface. The additional CO2 that is absorbed by the oceans causes seawater to become more acidic. In this video, I will examine the effects of that increased seawater acidity. The chemistry underlying ocean acidification is somewhat complicated. When CO2 is absorbed by the oceans, the CO2 molecules combine with water molecules, H2O, to form carbonic acid molecules, H2CO3. However, the carbonic acid molecules are not stable and they quickly dissociate to form first a negatively charged bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus, and a positively charged hydrogen ion, H plus, as shown in the top equation. The bicarbonate ion can then dissociate to form a carbonate ion, CO3 minus minus, and two positively charged hydrogen ions. Notice that the arrows in the first equation go in both directions. This is because the reactions can go either way, depending on local physical conditions, including temperature and ocean currents, as well as the local chemistry of the seawater, which contains a host of different compounds and ions. Seawater generally is slightly alkaline with a higher concentration of hydroxide ions, OH minus, than hydrogen ions, H plus. But as the seawater becomes more acidic, the increased concentration of H plus ions tends to drive the reaction shown in the first equation to the left, creating more bicarbonate ions, that is HCO3 minus. Under equilibrium conditions, the concentration of carbonate ions and bicarbonate ions would remain steady. But as more carbon dioxide dissolves in the seawater, the excess hydrogen ions make the water slightly more acidic. That in turn causes some of the carbonate ions to combine with the free hydrogen ions to form more bicarbonate ions. Seawater contains calcium ions, and as shown in the second equation, the calcium ions combine with carbonate ions to form calcium carbonate. Many marine organisms use this calcium carbonate to form their shells or their skeletons. The increase in bicarbonate ions and the decrease in carbonate ions that occurs as the seawater becomes more acidic has negative consequences for marine organisms. With fewer carbonate ions available in the more acidic seawater, less calcium carbonate is available for marine organisms to use to build their shells and their skeletons. This chart provides a quick review of the pH scale that scientists use to measure the acidity or alkalinity of a liquid. This is a logarithmic scale that measures the relative concentration of hydrogen ions, H plus, and hydroxide ions, OH minus. A neutral solution such as distilled water is assigned a pH of seven and has equal numbers of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. The pH scale is logarithmic, which means that each increase or decrease of one pH unit implies a tenfold increase or decrease 
in the hydrogen ion concentration. Acidic solutions have pH values that are less than seven, and alkaline solutions or basic solutions have pH values greater than seven. Seawater is slightly alkaline, having a pH of approximately 8.1. This chart shows recent measurements of the ocean pH near Hawaii. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, the average ocean pH was about 8.2. Today, the average ocean pH is about 8.1. This might not seem like a big change, but because the pH scale is logarithmic and each number on the scale represents a tenfold change, a decrease in ocean pH of a tenth of a pH unit means that ocean water is now about 25% more acidic than it was in pre-industrial times. This change in ocean acidity has been remarkably rapid, approximately 10 times faster than all the other pH changing events in the previous 55 million years. The impact of the current episode of ocean acidification on marine life is an area of active research, and there's still much that is unknown. It may well be the case that many species of marine life will be able to adapt to the increasing acidity of the oceans, while others will be much more severely affected. This table provides some estimates of the major responses of different types of marine life the ocean acidification based on the current state of scientific knowledge. The table may be a bit difficult to read, so I'll go through it with you. First, fleshy algae and diatoms will benefit modestly from acidification. Fleshy algae growth is expected to increase by roughly 20% and the growth of diatoms by a bit less. On the other hand, calcifying algae are expected to decrease in abundance by as much as 80%. Mollusks, including scallops, mussels, oysters, and the like, are expected to take a big hit with a reduction of around 35% in their survival rate. Sea urchins and similar organisms are expected to see about a 10% reduction in growth and development. Corals are likely to be hit hard with a 30% reduction in calcification and a nearly 50% reduction in abundance. Crustaceans, such as shrimp, prawns, crabs, and lobsters should be relatively resistant to changes in ocean pH. Fin fish are expected to be impacted by loss of habitat and food supply, as well as by physiological changes. Clearly, these changes are having significant effects on the food chain and on the people who depend on our oceans for sustenance and for their livelihoods. In closing, let me emphasize that ocean acidification is very much an active area of research and there still is much that we don't know about the effects that the increasing levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere will have on our oceans. Please post any questions you may have in the comments section of the video, and I'll do my best to answer them. Your questions and comments help to increase the audience for my videos, so they are very much appreciated. I invite you to watch some of my other climate related videos. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.